back. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, we've been having a lot of internet problems, so maybe that's it. So if you're with me, and I know some of you are saying, what happened, Pastor Rob? I'm back. If for some reason, the, very, the opening was lost, and I noticed that I had Facebook had gone off for a second. So I'm just going to pick right up. I had six or seven people online listening. I hope you know that I didn't lose you on purpose. So click on me again, please, and, and get ready to continue to watch. Juwan, you're back on. Praise the Lord. Did I go off the air at all? Did it, look, it probably did for about 30 or 40 seconds. So anyway, please don't think that I purposely hung up on you. So we are starting up part two again because we lost you on the internet so um, I'm gonna start where I left off but remember I'm talking about who are you part two and let's see I had talked about we can see in the scriptures where in Ephesians 2 6 it says he raised us up together with him when we believe and see and believe with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places because we are in Christ. See, when you begin to know who you are and your position of who you are, look out, God works in great ways. So, yes, I noticed that the video did end earlier, so we're, I'll just continue this one. Hopefully it won't crash on me again. So, anyway, unfortunately, some Christians have an identity crisis. They don't know who they are in Christ or where they are seated in Christ. Instead of identifying with Christ, they are identifying with the problems they are confronted with. So often we see that. You can tell that uh, they call themselves divorced or bankrupt or so on and so forth. And I'll get to that in part two. I'll talk a little more deeper about that. In 2 Corinthians 5.17 it says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. So you need to remember that. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So we need to listen to God and identify with who he says we are. See, that's the key. We need to identify who God says we are, not, not who the world says we are. Remember, I, I listed Abram, uh, Sari, and how God changed her name because he began to speak the promises on him. Uh, also, how Gideon, he, he felt like such a wimp, and God finally... Um, God finally just sent an angel, and the angels in Judges 6 said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. And later we find out that he finally realizes, yes, he is a mighty warrior of the Lord. So, you know, God calls us many, many things, but he doesn't, you know, it's something, God never, God doesn't bust on us. He doesn't call you stupid. He doesn't call you uh, a good for nothing. He calls you his child. He knows our good, our bad, and our ugly. And so don't don't listen to that mother or that father who said, you'll never uh, mount anything like I told you that pastor had said to me. And, of course, anytime somebody would say, well, that'll never work, or you can't do this, or you can't do that, I always fought back. Well, in the spiritual realm, after that man said that, I really began to seek the Lord, and, and the Lord really started to line things up in my life. But the key is not to hate people, not to not to have revenge against people, but instead, if somebody says something evil against you, go to the Lord and ask him about that. And make sure it's the Lord, and the Lord will reveal, you know what, there are some things you need to work on, let me help you. Or he'll say, that is a lie from the pit of hell. And you need to hear and listen and discern from God. I also mentioned that um, Pastor Kenneth Hagin had also said, here are some, uh, he gave some scriptures of who we are in Christ. We are new creatures. We are righteousness of God. We have been healed. We've been made rich. We are accepted and we are free from sin. And the one thing I, I have to say it again, I love what he said about Psalm 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And this is when he said, he goes, yea, he likes to put it this way. This is so good. Yea, though I walk through all the mess that the devil tries to put on me, I will fear no evil. Through my identification in Christ, I can walk on scorpions and not be harmed. Not through my own identification, but through my identifi identification in Christ. I can walk on anything that tries to get in my way and come out victoriously. So, it's time for us to stand up and be who God says we are. 
And so in part two, I'm going to, it's really cool. Right before I came on, about a half an hour before I came on, Corey Ashbery uh, has a song called The Father's House. Oh, Chicky Ryan just came on. It's great to see you, Chicky. Praise the Lord. It's all the way from Arizona. I never seem to get it right. But praise God you can be with us, sister. So anyway, right before I came on, uh, Corey Asbury, 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 I guess, uh, he sang the Father's House on Caleb. And I said, man, that is so perfect. That's exactly what I want to talk about. So I, right before I came on, I found the lyrics. I just want to read the lyrics to the, um, the Father's House. It says, um, yes, Tucson, Arizona. Thanks, Chicky. <laughs> anyway, in the song, The Father's House, you got to get it. It's so good. Uh, from Corey Asbury. Um, it says, Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes, don't we all? What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for his strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. And failure won't define me. Did you hear that? Don't let failure define you. Because that's what my father does. Yea, fa failure won't define me. That's what my father's does. My father does. Oh, lay your burdens down here in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, because it ain't welcome anymore. Isn't that true? Oh, you're in the Father's house. Arrival's not the end game. The journey's where you are. I like that. You never wanted perfect. You just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over if the story isn't good. And failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Isn't that true? So lay your burdens down here in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, because it ain't welcome anymore. And I like the part. another part of the uh, chorus. It says, prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide, the dead comes to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. And love is breaking through when the father's in the room. The Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Isn't that powerful? So there's so much more to that, but that that so goes along with with my message for today. That the Father looks at you and I so differently. I shared last last week how. My father wasn't a very positive person. He wasn't a Christian probably up until right before he, got, before he passed away. I pray that he was a Christian. I don't know for sure. But he only ever said he was proud of me the last time I saw him. And that was it. And that can really, that can be, really challenge you and change you. But I've told many people, since I didn't have a godly father, as you would call it, I found a godly father in Christ and in God the Father himself. And that's what we need to do. We need to quit blaming our parents, and we need to we need to look at our example, which was Jesus Christ. So, as I shared in part one, too often people base their identities on what they do from their jobs or to their roles and relationships and so on. They define themselves by their pursuits, They'll say, well, I'm a runner, or uh, I'm a mountain climber. But by doing so, they're significantly limiting their lives. I thought that's a really interesting statement. By defining ourselves by our pursuits, we are significantly limiting our lives. The truth is, God intends for all people to find their identity in Christ. Not their identity in something else, their identity in Christ. If you're a Christian, your identity encompasses all the abundance of being beloved, the beloved child of God. And I think I shared that before, the one lyrics from Ch uh, uh, Child of Love from we, we Are the Kingdom. Powerful message. But you see where I'm going with this. You are a child of God. You are loved by God the Father. So here's how you, here's how you can start living your life. Fully in Christ, keeping in mind that your identity is found in Him. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a list, and you don't have to write it. It's not in any specific order, but you don't have to write it down. Just listen, or just write down the the key points. Um, first off, and and this is interesting because when I first got saved, I thought only 
Catholic people who had done so many miracles were saints. And then I came to realize that you're a saint. God looks at you as a saint. The fact that you placed your trust in Jesus is enough to qualify you to be a saint. Even though you'll still struggle with sin while you live on this fallen world, your core identity as a Christian is as a saint, not a sinner. You're not a sinner anymore. And you can always count on Jesus to help to overcome the sin in your life. So don't, don't say, I'm a sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner saved by grace. Rely on his help to resist temptation. That's the only way you can do it. When you do sin, confess and repent. Maintain attitudes of humility and gratitude for God's grace. That's good, isn't it? Ephesians 2.19 says, Therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God. Colossians 1.11-13 Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience in giving joyful thanks to the Father, who, who does this has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Oh, man. He has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. Romans 8, 27. Love the Lord, with, love the Lord all you saints. The Lord preserves the faithful. Paul called us saints. Ephesians three seventeen. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that you may, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints, that's including the other people, what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height. Guess what? You're blessed. You are blessed. Not just a saint, but you're blessed. God has given you the greatest blessing of all himself. What a great gift. No matter what other blessings God may or may not choose to send into your life, you can always be confident that God himself will be with you, loving you, and working everything in your life out for good purpose when you trust him to do so, when you love him. God also brings many different specific blessings into your life regularly. Do you recognize them? Make it a habit of reflecting on those blessings every day, every week, and thanking him for them. Even if you sit down at the dinner table. Oh, Lord, don't, don't say thank you for this food, you know, out of the mouth, you know, so whatever the prayer is. Instead, Lord, thank you for the safety today. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for bringing this part that we needed today, Lord. Thank you for opening up my mind so I could do this or that. You know, have an attitude of gratitude. Psalm 1, 1 through 3 said, Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step, in step with the wicked or stand in the way of the sinner or sit in the company of the mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose lead, whose lead does not wither. It says lead. It's whose leaves does not wither. Whatever they do will prosper. It's an interesting typo. Second Corinthians nine eight, and God is able to bless you abundantly. Do you realize He is able to do that, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need. You will abound in every good work. Okay, so saint. Okay, what was the second one? You're blessed. The third one, you're appreciated. People say, well, God doesn't need to appreciate me. Huh. God notices and appreciates every good choice you make throughout your life, even when other people don't. And see, that's, that's important. So change the way you live as a result. Exchange your grumbling for praying, uh, competing for celebrating, and bitterness for thankfulness, performing for serving, and boasting for encouraging. First John 3, 1 John 3.1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. Zephaniah 3.17, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you, great delight in you, in his love, he will no longer rebuke, rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Guess what? This is an easy one. Hopefully it is. You're saved. Thanks to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, you're saved from sin and death. Your old nature and pattern of the world and living is gone. You can respond in gratitude to your salvation by good works. That God has prepared for you to do. To help others discover relationships with him. But see, remember, you can't 
get to heaven by good works. But once you're born again, uh, it says by grace through faith, you know, you're not saved. But um, works without grace without works is dead. So the grace in you because of Christ will begin to change you and form you. So you will naturally um, want to do things to, to bless the Lord. Romans uh, 10, 9, and 10 says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is the Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So we, hopefully you know that. See, you're also you're reconciled. So you need to realize who you are because you are reconciled. Jesus has spiritually reconciled you to God. And other believers, you realize, not just you personally, but all the other believers, since God plans for all Christians from all diverse types of backgrounds on earth, to live harmoniously together in heaven forever, you should do your best to live harmoniously here and now. That's a hard one, isn't it? Ask the Holy Ghost to help you be peaceful, humble, and compassionate toward other people, especially brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's see, Romans 5 says, For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only this is so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received our reconciliation. Number six, you will have, and, and this is so important, you will have trouble and tribulation in your life as a, Christ, as a Christian. You will, but he'll always be with you. You need to be alert because these things happen, but don't blame God, but he'll always be with you. In 1 Peter 5 eight. Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, Yet inwardly we are being re renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us eternal glory that far outweighs them all. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you'll have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. See, God hears you. That's the next one. You need to realize God hears you. You're heard. God always hears and responds to your prayers when you're connected to him through Jesus. Feel free to confidently express any of your thoughts and feelings to God, any of them. And talk to him normal. Don't try to do it in King James. Jeremiah 29, 12-13 says, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. See, God, God will listen. He says, You will seek me, you will find me, when you seek me with all your heart. 1 Peter 3.12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. 1 John 5.15 And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Oh, this next one is really good. You're gifted. And you say, but no, I'm, I've, uh, my family members have always been garbage collectors, and there's nothing wrong with garbage collectors. So I'll always be a garbage collector. That's, that must be my only gift. No, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you for your patience. God has given you special abilities that he wants you to use in the Christian ministry work. And, and I love this. In the Christian ministry work he calls you to do. Both inside the church and out in your community. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, oh my. You can discover the gifts by asking yourself questions like who or whom and where do you have your passion to serve? Where's your passion at? What do you have a burden to do? What needs do you see in the church? What do you find joy in doing for others? What opportunities has God already provided for you to serve others? You see, serving others, doing things for other people. What things are you best at and have the most success in? What have you? What have godly people commended you for doing and what acts of service have given you the deepest sense of satisfaction? See, God will begin to give you that satisfaction and that the feeling knowing what you're supposed to do, even though it might be something simple. 
or something very complicated. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. When I said, when I use the garbage collector, I honestly, I don't mean that as a bust on anybody. I don't care if you're a dishwasher, a garbage collector, a doctor, a lawyer. If you are doing it for the glory of the Lord and in, and in your walk at that time, you are you are doing some mighty things. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful steward of stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do as one who speaks the very word of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with strength God that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. So, you know, even in the, even Paul, he talks about the different parts of the body. For just in Romans 12, he says, For just as each one of us uh, have uh, has one body with many members, these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others, we have different gifts according to the grace given to us. Is your gift prophesying? Then prophesy is your, in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's by giving, um, if it is giving, then give generously. If it's to to lead, then lead diligently. If it's to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. So I, I know I'm, I'm sharing a lot all at once, but do it as unto the Lord. You know, and, and the scriptures also promise that we're a new person. Don't keep saying, but oh, I never could do that in the past. Who cares? Second Corinthians 5, 17, remember, says you're a new creation in Christ. There's scriptures all over the place that you're a new person. You're forgiven. Don't forget that you're forgiven for your past. Since Jesus paid the price that God's justice demanded for your sin and took God's wrath for you upon himself, you were forgiven for all your sins, past, present, and future. When you place your trust in the Lord, you can thank Jesus for forgiving you by obeying his commands to forgive others who have harmed you and to seek forgiveness from people you've harmed. Uh, Ephesians 4.32, Paul tells us, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ just as in Christ God forgave you. You're adopted. I love this. You're adopted. As a Christian, you've been adopted into God's family. The work of your brother Jesus on the cross has made it possible for you to become one of the sons or daughters of God the Father. So make your main goal of life learning how to know, love, and trust God as your Father. Did you hear me? Make a main goal of your life learning how to know, Love and trust God as your Father. Romans 8.15 says, The spirit you receive does not make you a slave, so that in you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about you adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering, in order that we may also share in his glory. So many powerful scriptures. Ephesians 1, verses 4 through 5. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for the adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will. So what he's basically saying is because of Christ, it was preordained that we can be saved if we receive him as our Lord and Savior. And another one is you're loved. While the people who love you can't do, some, um, can't do so completely unselfishly, continually or perfectly, Romans 8, 37, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither the height nor depth or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ. Guess what? 
be rewarded. God will reward you for everything faithful and holy that you do as a Christian. Although you can't earn your salvation after you've been saved, you can earn the rewards in heaven for the work you do serving here on earth. Uh, Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, work at with all your, all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. And I like Galatians 6, 9. It really comes in handy when you're in ministry. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Finally, you are victorious. Jesus has given you the power to ultimately overcome evil, sin, and death. Use the spiritual weapons at your disposal as a Christian. Truth, righteousness, the gospel, faith, salvation, scriptures, prayer, and strength to stand in spiritual battles, trusting that you can always emerge victoriously. Don't forget Ephesians 6. It tells you how to put on the full armor of God. 1 John 5, 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. John 16, 33, I have told you these things. So that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. He says he's overcome the world. So realize, like in 1 Corinthians 15, 55 to 57. It's interesting. I usually read this at funerals. But it's so, so true. It says, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So... When I tell people that, you know, I'm not I'm not afraid to die. Yes, I'm, you know, I would miss my family, but death doesn't have a hold on me like it had on me so many years ago and how it has on so many other people. So, we need to realize who we are in Christ. We are his children. We are we are loved, we are saints. There's so much that we are. So don't give up be blessed knowing who you are in him. Knowing that we are to love one another, especially those of us in the faith. We are really, I mean, you love your brother and your sister, your normal biological brother and sister. But I would hope that you would love your brothers and sisters in the Lord as much or more because you're loving them in the Lord. So hopefully this part one and part two have encouraged you to remember who you are. Don't get down. I know we all do. But if you do, call somebody and say, I need to talk to somebody. I am having a rough week. Or, or message them or tell them how you're doing. And, you know, I, I'm telling you, if I say I'm going to pray for you, I will pray for you as the Lord leads me. And that means as I'm doing something, I'll be on the tractor and the Lord will say, you need to pray for, you need to pray for Carl or Jawan or, or whoever. I'll be praying. I'll be thinking of you and meditating on God's healing, God's working, or whatever he wants to do in your life. You know, I know a lot of people going through so many different things right now. And as my day goes through, I think of those people, and that's when I pray. Do I have a written list? No. I, I, I can barely remember to write down what I have to do for today, but the Holy Spirit never forgets. So, as I close, just know who you are in Christ. Don't give up. Remember that song, The Father's House. You know, shame has to stay at the door. You know, we are blessed and we are forgiven and we are loved. So take care. Have a great week in the Lord. Don't forget 1045 Sunday morning Facebook Live. But we'd love to have you come to church and uh, share, you know, God's testimony in your life and be blessed. Take care now. And I just, I want to challenge you. Do not. Allow the devil to knock you down and destroy you. God bless.